Peggy 16. You're watching Battlefield Boot Camp, and this episode I'm joined by Addison, and today we're going to be discussing defensive maneuvers in the jets. So Addison, before we even take to the skies, what should our loadouts look like? So personally, I use the ECM jammer over the flares. I think it's superior. Um, the flares are the easy option. You unlock them first, and unfortunately, the ECM jammer's all the way at the other end, but it is worth it. It's worth the wait. The reason is, the ECM jammer kind of does the job that flares do, but it also does another additional job. So the flares we know, they distract the missile and they, they stop the you know, missile coming into contact with you once they've been launched. Now the ECM jammer, most people don't know this, but the ECM jammer also can do that, also can distract the missile once it's been launched. What you need to do though is get the missile to fly through the smoke that's coming out of the back of your plane because you're using the ECM jammer. The other thing that the ECM jammer is most you know, known for is its ability to stop lock-ons. So what happens is you press the ECM jammer and it's got a, it's a 10 second gadget basically. It's got an active window of five seconds and then it's got a cooldown period of five seconds. So at the point that you uh, are able to use the ECM jammer, you've already got um, below radar. Now what below radar does is it stops any uh, lock-ons just like the ECM does, apart from the Stingers or the Igglers, so it won't stop those unfortunately, uh, but any other lock-on it'll, it'll do the same. So if you, have, if you have a jet behind you and you've used your ECM and it's got a five second cooldown period, all you have to do is fly below radar for five seconds and then you've, you've got your ECM again. So what I tend to do is if somebody's on my tail, I'll pop my ECM if they're locking onto me, and I, I invert my plane, I, I turn it upside down, and then I barrel straight towards the ground. So I, I use the below radar, and then as soon as my ECM's recharged, I pop that straight away. And at that point in time, that's when you can perform your defensive maneuvers, your tight turns, your loops to get behind them because you've got the five second window that the ECM provides. Well, the good thing about the uh, below radar as well is it's kind of like a passive ability. Yeah. You don't have to physically equip it on your loadout. I remember when I first unlocked it, I was shuffling through going, I can't find it. Yeah. <laughs> but the good thing is once you've got it, it does apply to all of your jets you're in. That's right. And just one last point on this ECM versus flares. The cooldown window for the flares is, is 10 seconds. It's the same as the ECM. But as soon as you pop the flares, that's it you're vulnerable for those maybe nine seconds, eight seconds, something like that. That's the difference between the flares and the ECM. You're actually covered for five seconds out of the 10. So that's why I prefer ECM over the flares. So you mentioned pulling off some tight turns to escape someone who's on your tail. Yep. Can you go into more detail? So uh, a lot of people ask about turning speeds and heights and, and things like that. And whilst that is valuable information, um, I find it just distracts me. me from what I'm trying to do. There could be other things that are attacking me or lock-ons I need to avoid. And if I'm staring at a number, then you know it's not, not very useful for me. So um, personally, also an another thing that people ask about is um, afterburners. Yeah. Uh, a lot of people say it's a sin using afterburners. And the reason why is it's to do with that turning speed. Um, if you are messing around with the afterburners, increasing and then decreasing your speed very quickly, you're gonna you know, move away from that ideal turning speed. But myself, I kind of feel like it allows me to sort of drift in the air, if that makes any sense. Um, it allows me to sort of like swing my, my plane around and do um, more tight turns than I would be able to if I was just going in a, a circular motion. And that's what you get with a constant turning speed. It's a very, very tight circular motion, tighter than all the other turning speeds you get. That's why most people like it. But I personally can perform, or I think I can, perform uh, tighter moves by not concentrating on the, the, the turning speed, by actually using the afterburners at the right time, as you can see in the, the clip there. Now you did mention that you like to fly low, especially when it comes to avoiding your lock-ons. Now if you come up against someone like me, who relies on their main gun and not the rockets, you're going to be a bit in a bit of trouble if I come swooping down from above. So what would you recommend to avoid people who actually use the main gun? When, when people are using the main gun, they are on the minimap. Um, so what you can do is, what I would personally do is uh, do some sort of uh, looped turn. So combine a backwards loop with a turn. Um, what that does is it means that you're not doing a, a very straightforward maneuver. If you were just doing a loop, then people would be able to perform a tighter loop than yourself and shoot you down. If you were just turning, then they would 
maybe be able to perform a tighter turn and even take you down. So what I like to do is combine it, um, maybe do a fake as well, um, which is a, a short movement the opposite way and then swing it all the way back around. Um, and that sort of allows me to, again with my better turning speed, then outmaneuver hopefully yourself and uh, get back on onto the back of your plane and take you down. Well, we're not always that lucky, I'm afraid. <laughs> but so what you're saying is if someone's on your tail, don't stay straight. You want to firm, you want to go swinging left to right because if you try and outspeed them, they will gun you down. Yeah, um, it's not just that. It's just that you, it's, it's also that you're at a disadvantage if they're behind you. So you want to try and get yourself onto a level playing field and then give yourself back the advantage. And the, the more difficult you can make it for the enemy pilot, the less likely he is to stay directly behind you. Is there any other tips that you've got for us in regards to staying alive in the sky? One quick tip that you could try out there on the battlefield is combining the use of your ECM jammer with the little fake that I mentioned earlier. So you fake one way and then pop the ECM jammer maybe just after the fake or halfway through the fake and then you'll disappear off the map. That's, that's the tip basically. So if you combine it with the fake, um, they'll think you've gone one way and you can sail off in the other way to safety or sneak up on behind them and go in for the attack. So basically it's your disappearing act. Yeah, disappearing trick, like a magician. Well, speaking of disappearing, that's all we've got time for this episode. <laughs> we'll see you next time on Battlefield Bootcamp.